Thank you for joining us in the latest installment of our Artist Talk series. Today, we sat down with Mary Sterner Lawson, a Tallahassee artist who is currently featured in our Deeper Look exhibition alongside Leah McDonald. In this show, Mary focuses on bas relief sculptures and watercolor paintings, producing what she describes as varieties of representations as she experiments with numerous mediums. All of the pieces mentioned in the interview are available for purchase in the gallery and on our website, www.bemvyartgallery.com. And with that, please enjoy the interview. So starting things off, um, your current exhibition here at Benvy is titled Deeper Look. Can you give an overview on what this means and how it relates to the title? I think that uh, knowing what the subject would be of this particular exhibit sort of inspired me to think about different kinds of things that would work well with it, mm -hmm. perhaps. And I don't know, for certain, some of the kinds of subject matter relates well. Lichens, for example, do mm -hmm. deeper look. But also, one of the other things that I have done is by relief form. And I guess it could be said that in these particular ones, there are two in, in the show, I've taken a deeper look at a subject matter that interested me. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my husband said that I should refer to it also as broader look, though, because I have I've worked in acrylic and pen and ink and watercolor, uh, the bas-relief of clay, mm -hmm. and different forms of clay, too, different techniques. Yeah, definitely. And kind of going into that, as you stated, you're using a variety of mediums within this. We have these clay pieces, ink, watercolor, just kind of all over the place. Um, how does your artistic process change with each medium that you use? And is there one you prefer working with over the other? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, the one I fall back on all the time, pen and ink and watercolor mm -hmm. wash, particularly pen and ink, I almost always have my sketchbook with me. But I really like dimensions and that's, that's where the love of clay comes in. I guess I'd have to say I don't like to limit myself mm -hmm. because I just simply like to experiment. If something comes up, something different, then I want to try it. Absolutely. Could you give us a little background on your development as an artist? Kind of what inspired you to pursue the field and what that process was like for you from your kind of beginnings up until this current point? Okay, well, I've always been exposed to art. My, my parents would take us to galleries and I know that my dad's mother, who died when he was seven, was an artist, and we have some of her art around the house. And on the other side of the family, art was a part of it as well, too. So it, it, that's always been a part. And for some reason, I always wanted to be an artist, allegedly from when I was four, when I told my parents I wanted to be an art, not knowing the, <clears throat> the, the, uh, <laughs> the words, the language as well. Mm -hmm. But all through high school, I took two periods a day of art. I took art courses and classes and workshops. Even though I chose uh, English, I couldn't decide whether major in English or art and ended up cho choosing English, but still exhibited Florida Seafood Festival, different shows since the 80s. Yeah, it's kind of what I've noticed uh, talking with Leah earlier and in some of the other interviews I've done is that there isn't kind of just one sole direction that you take as an artist. It's kind of doing a little bit of everything. And kind of what is that like for you? Well, since I also like to do literature, mm -hmm. I don't have to include it in this sentence, but I think that anyone who, who likes to read and to draw is never bored. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's it, there's always something new, something different. I just recently got some, some uh, sort of liquid charcoal as the next experiment that I'm going to work with. Very and cool. I have a roll of copper that I'm thinking of doing one of the bas relief forms in, mm -hmm. working with that. Awesome. So kind of going specifically into the exhibition, um, in Deeper Look, you have a collection of lichen paintings kind of up here mm -hmm. um, that are kind of spread all throughout the gallery. Can you explain to us why you chose this muse and if there's any significance to it? Well, I love nature, and that's a constant inspiration as well, too, among the, among the many other things that catch my eye. Mm -hmm. But during COVID, we really couldn't go as many places, and I yeah. walk around the neighborhood almost daily for periods of time, and of course, lichens are just readily available. They're on the limbs, they're on metal, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I love the beauty of them. They're kind of science fiction-like, and it's intriguing because there's so many different forms in them. 
So that, that was the inspiration for the lichens. And now that definitely would be deeper in my gallery mark because it concentrate. I just like to do a real close look mm -hmm. and concentrate on it. Yeah, going more into that, I love all of the titles for each of them. They really give more insight into each individual lichen, even though it is a collection. Um, how do you go about naming them? Mm, that, that's a challenge. Some mm -hmm. of them, some of them seem to have more of a, a, a logic to the to the name, and I don't, I can't think of it being any but interesting, bit interesting if you say lichen one, lichen two, lichen three. Yeah. So I try to imagine maybe what it would seem to represent the mm -hmm. collection of them and the way the lichens are grouped on the limb. Yeah, it almost tells a story with each mm -hmm. title. Another example of some of your work in Deeper Look, I'm fascinated by the connection between two of the pieces in the exhibition, Florence Market and Florence Market Two, which one is kind of a pen and ink watercolor and then you reimagined it as the bas relief. Could you kind of describe what that process was like, transferring between the mediums. Okay, well, it, there actually would be another part of it. Too. Initially, I took a photo and I did a pen and ink. I guess if I could have located that in my, mm -hmm. my studio, that would have been good to have there too. But uh, the transference was, because I'm in clay classes at the Lemoyne with Nancy Jefferson, uh, who's inspirational and in, in my thinking of different things too, uh, because I was there and somehow got the thought that a bas-relief might be an interesting way to try to transform that image into, mm -hmm. uh, I, I experimented. I had already done another one, there's one in here called Favela, mm -hmm. and I a couple other times experimented with that form. But it seemed to be a viable one, and I would think of it as, in a way as painting in clay. Yeah. And using the glazes, which you can't, you really can't determine the outcome of the glazes, how they'll end up uh, showing up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Nancy's phrase is that sometimes it's Christmas, sometimes it's Halloween, when it comes <laughs> out of the kiln. Mm -hmm. if, some, if it's Christmas, ah, wonderful, and otherwise not, like Halloween, horrific. But those, both, um, both the one that you mentioned mm -hmm. and the, the Whitney by night mm -hmm. uh, ended up being the, the transference is taking an idea and trying to transform it into that particular form and yeah. deciding, deciding how to do it. Uh, one of them is more is uh, digging into a slab of clay, whereas Whitney by Night, I used it as sort of um, hmm, uh, patches, pieces of for the, for the rails and, and so forth. Not exactly like an applique, like a quilt. And that's experimenting in form too. The yeah. transference from a from something that I felt very strongly about, I, I wouldn't be tempted to do it. You just ha helter skelter on subject matter, but it have to be a subject matter that I would transfer what was maybe a sketch to what would be the next form, the final form of bas relief. Yeah, and picking up on what you first mentioned about how it started as a photograph, I know in some of the other uh, paintings and sketches that you have at the gallery that are. Uh, maybe not hanging, but in the little carousel, you told me about how they started as a photograph and you were actually there and that process. Is that something that you do pretty often? I know you have the sketch work where you're live sketching, but it seems mm -hmm. like photography transferring into the art form is something that you do often. It, it, it is, mm -hmm. particularly if I can't, uh, if the person is not going to pose for me. Yeah, and I like the the natural happening of someone in motion. Mm -hmm. um, the one uh, Ruby's diamond mm -hmm. is a person walking into Ruby Diamond, and I caught my eye. And that's what usually happens. Somebody catches. I really like the way the pose, the look, something about the appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I can, I'd sure like to freeze the person in time as they hold it and mm -hmm. let me draw you. But of course, it's a stranger, and I don't who it is and I can't say that and the person wouldn't stop. Anyway, so then the quick photo happens mm -hmm. and that happens some other times. The ideal ones is if I happen to be, I'll say in a restaurant, a doctor's office, a car dealership waiting for my car and I do what I call stealth sketches mm -hmm. <laughs> and I consider myself a sort of a stealth sketcher, mm -hmm. not entirely good at it. Someone said they saw me at the Bach Parley and they could see my head bobbing up and down <laughs> as I would look up and down, mm -hmm. kept drawing 
the person near me. So I try to be more careful yet with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like to do the on-site sketch. If I can't, but I really, really want to catch the person and maybe transform the person into to some other form, mm -hmm. uh, then I do the photo and yeah. then I work from the photo. Awesome, that kind of just shows that like art is all around us and mm -hmm. anything can really be art. So one of the last pieces that I really wanted to dive into is your painting Hearts Haven, which is above you there. Um, I think it's a great representation of this exhibition as a whole, deeper look. Um, and I think people would be curious to kind of hear the backstory of this painting, such as why there's two dates labeled on it. Um, mm -hmm. And I know you've shared this with me. Could you share with the viewers kind of the behind the scenes of this painting? Okay, well, personally for me, is the, the family home. It was in the family over 100 years mm -hmm. in Finley, Ohio. And uh, my parents could have updated it. My dad was an accountant for Marathon Oil Company. They could have made it fancier. Um, some person walking in once said, oh, this room has a lot of promise. But I think what it did have is the warmth that my mother and the, my, her mother before and people before that in the family mm -hmm. imbued it with. Um, it's like it old, has an old coal stove, one time coal stove that was transformed into radiator heat. That's why you see the pipes. Um, it, this, I don't, I think it may have been added to, this is maybe in the 1890s, I don't know, because there's brick on one side, so that could have been the outside of the house. Anyway, it was in 88, the house was sold and I had a photo and I worked with it, it's dated 1991, because I learned before the date of 1991 that the house had been demolished and that it, the, the land was sold for parking lot. And I once actually sadly drove over my family home spot at one point. But I found this photo and then decided to do it and, and date it 1991. I have to say my technique changes and I probably wouldn't not paint it exactly like this, but when the show uh, was set up uh, and I was looking through what I call my archives, older, older paintings that are just in the closet, I found this one. Mm -hmm. This one happened to have been a, what I would call a true watercolor because in, in, um, I, when I brought my parents down who were both very sick to Albany, Georgia, where I, I taught at Albany State University for over 31 years, when I brought them down to Albany, Georgia, um, I put this, the original of this, from 1991 time into where my mother was staying, and mother and father were staying. Anyway, a flood took place and during in the 90s, early 90s, and this was underwater, in water, in like six feet of water in the room. So it was essentially seemingly ruined. Well, I, I managed to get it out of there and I rinsed off the mud from it and let it dry and then really just didn't do anything with it. But when the, the show was going to be taking place and I saw that, and because I now tend to use more ink with the watercolor, I just mm -hmm. enjoy that technique, I decided to see, hmm, wonder what would happen. Plus I put more shading in and I did some of the things I would do if I were painting it in, in 2023, mm -hmm. you know, how I would approach it. Um, but the, the, the whole thing to me it kind of has a whole warmth to it and a feeling of my mother who might be sitting at the table saying, come on in and have a cup of coffee. Originally it would be a percolator in this kitchen, but the, the, uh, it's a drip one there. And it was just a warm, 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 friendly yeah. place. So I did more work on it and put 2023. So that's why it peculiarly has two, has two dates on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that warmth that you keep mentioning really comes through to myself and I know all the other viewers who have looked at it so far and talked with me about it. Wrapping things up, finally, what do you want visitors to take away most from this exhibit when they walk in and look at your work? Well, I do realize that there are some different styles here. I work in different, use different approaches. What I'd like them to take away is you can try to do anything that you don't really have to think, oh, I can't draw. And I, as I say, if I had a dollar for every person who said I can't draw a circle or I can't draw a stick figure, I could go on a cruise, a world cruise, a really nice one on an upscale ship. Mm -hmm. But every, people can learn to draw. I've taught classes in that. 
and you should enjoy, try doing different things. If something doesn't happen to please your fancy, try some other approach to some other medium. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Did you have anything else that you wanted to add before we wrap things up? I think local art is very important to support mm -hmm. and visiting art galleries locally is very important to support. And I hope people come down to the Vendee and see this and other shows. Absolutely.